today I'm going to be removing the Magic Pie on the rear of this bike and installing our newest motor, the Magic Pie Edge. This is a 48 volt 500 watt motor. Uh, you can view other videos or the website for more information on it. Before I mount it, I'm going to try several different freewheels we have. 6 speed and 7 speed Shimano, 7 speed and 8 speed DNP. I'm going to be putting different freewheel washers behind and washers in front to see what it actually takes for each one to fit. And I have a freewheel tool here for removing it and a wrench. So here we go. Okay, so now I have my bike upside down, which is the next step for any bike. What I'm going to have to do is loosen off the nuts, and, nuts from each side, take the nuts and washers off. On here I already have torque arms because this bike has a motor on it already. Your bike may not. Same as the other side. Take the big nut off. Undo the torque arm and that. I'm going to be putting these torque arms back on the new wheel. So they'll probably line up perfectly with the existing wheel. So I'm just going to take as minimal off as possible. And we'll take it from there. Now I've removed the nuts and washers from each side of the axle. So the motor should come out quite easily. And uh, you can see that there's a washer in between the frame and the shoulders of the axle where it gets wider. The same as on this side, there's a washer right in there. Uh, when I pull the bike wheel out, I'm going to take this brake off and put it on the new wheel. I know I normally tell people to leave it on there, but uh, rear wheels, and especially under the free wheel, it's very difficult to get this plastic off. So it's better to do it ahead of time. Just be careful you don't scratch the motor. Okay, so here we have the six-speed Shimano mounted and you can see it's mounted nicely. It's a little close here. Your chain may rub on the motor. I don't think so, but I did not put the spacer behind it. Just to see how it fits. This is the spacer for behind the freewheel. But the key thing here is I'm going to put the washer on and you can see there's a huge space here because your frame is going to go up against here between the freewheel. So this will easily fit on your bike with the washer behind it or not. And now to get it off, I have to use a freewheel tool. A regular freewheel tool will not work. You need an e-bike freewheel tool. And I can just turn it backwards and spin that freewheel right off. Okay, so the six fits no problem. You can put a shim behind it, no problem. Let's try the seven. Seven speed Shimano. Oh, I got it on a little crooked there. This is why you always need a tool. Spin it off. Got to make sure you get it on nice and straight and it doesn't cross thread. Still not correct. I think it's because I have the wheel on the side I'm having so much trouble. If the wheel was flat and I placed it on it would be easier. Okay, I can tell I have it there now. Spin it right in. Okay, now it's tight. You can see again it's quite close to the motor. Might need a ring behind it. Out here with the washer, lots of clearance space for your frame to go up against and clear. So seven speed fits no problem. And you could put a ring behind it if you felt it was necessary. Okay, so now we're gonna pop that one off. So this is basically the same fit as what you would get on the Magic Pies. Maybe a little less. Now we're gonna try a seven speed DMP. What's great about this one, is the small tooth is a the small gear is 11 teeth so you could easily pedal at 20 miles an hour with this on or 32 kilometers an hour with this freewheel again the seven speed fits nice you got a good gap behind here it's not binding on the motor or anything so the seven speed dnp is no problem okay we'll push that one off you don't need a ring behind that one Okay, there we go. And now we'll try the eight-speed DNP. Goes on nicely. Seems to fit a little closer to the motor. You would need a spacer behind it. And still the ring is nice out, nice distance for the chain to clear here. But this one, I think you should have the ring behind it. Here's the tool. Okay, let's spin that one off again. So this is where you put a ring. 
right around here. Three wheel spacer ring. Come on, there we go. And then I'll spin it back on again. Put it on nice and straight. Okay, now we have a reasonable distance behind here for the chain to clear. And when we put the washer on, the frame will be up against the washer, so it will clear the freewheel. It looks like it's enough to clear the chain. I would get a second washer though, just in case you find it's not clearing your chain and you have one, then you can put your frame up against that. I'd also like to point out that we have two versions of the rear Magic Pie Edge wheel that can take cassettes. This one here, you can see the spline here, and it can take a five to seven speed cassette on there. And you can see from the length of the spline, when we get over to this one, it's much longer. This one can take an eight to 10 speed cassette. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be using the freewheel version of the Magic Pie Edge. And I've decided to go with the eight speed DNP on here, the eight speed freewheel, because the one I'm taking off is an eight speed. Uh, this was an eight speed Sunrace. But uh, now I'm going to put on an 8-speed DNP, which is my preferred wheel, 7 or 8 of this maker because of the 11-tooth gear on the bottom. So anyway, when looking at it here, it does appear that there is enough space between the motor and the, chain, and the gear here as opposed to the next gear. So it looks like the chain will not rub on the motor. And then down at this end as well, where the frame is going to go up against it here, it seems to be an equal space between here and here, as well as it is to the next set of teeth. So in looking at how I installed this brake disc on this holder wheel, I used a washer behind the head of each screw to prevent the screw from rubbing against the controller. If you only have the factory screws from regular bicycles, this is going to end up being too long. You need the shorter ones directly from us. So a good way of knowing if the screws are too long for your disc brake is to mount the disc brake on with just one screw but not all the way in and then put a wrench on the axle and turn it and feel the resistance. It should be very slight. It's a magnetic motor, so we'll have it. And then the next thing is to tighten in the screw. Tighten it in all the way. And then take the wrench again, put it on the axle, go to turn it. Now it's stiff, lumpy. So the screw is definitely biting into the surface of the controller. So I'm gonna have to put washers behind the screw like I showed earlier. So now I have the screw in all the way with the washer there, the brakes with this screw, and when I turn the motor with the wrench, it turns nice and easy. So it's not binding with the controller. And just to show you the difference between the screws that you get normally with bikes, this is the one that would be rubbing on the motor that you need to put a washer behind. And these are the ones that actually come with the disc brakes. Another thing to look at now that I've got the disc mounted and all the screws, or even if you don't have a disc, is to make sure that this clip is on this wire because this is very important to hold the wire away from the wheel. It's got two small holes the clip fits in there, and this keeps the wire cable from rubbing on the black part, the inside of the motor there, as well as the disc brake. The one thing, one tip for sure, is always use a valve extender to keep the tube from falling back inside the wheel when you're assembling. And it's kind of funny to get it in, so really you gotta lift this chain up. You gotta get it in between these two chains and in front of here. You know, sometimes it's easier just to have a, another person help you, you know, just to hold the chain open so you can get the wheel in and then you got to drop it down in place. And the things you got to watch out for is you don't want to get the disc brake caught here. You want to make sure that it falls in that hole. If it's not falling in there nicely, then you need to readjust, maybe loosen this off, let it move around while you get it into place. And you want to drop right into the two dropouts there, nice and clean. And also, you want to make sure that the cable doesn't get interfered with anything and that it's going, coming out of the motor in a backward or downward direction. So water coming from the front of the bike to the back will be running down the cable and go right off onto the ground. So now I have the motor dropped in place. One washer on the inside. The brake disc is fitting inside the brake caliper very nicely. And over on this side, 
I have one washer inside. I put the tab washer on the inside and this side. And I, I did put an extra one in there anyway to give it more space between the chain and the frame here. This bike is quite wide in the back. So the next thing to do now will be to put the second washers on the outside and then the torque arms. Okay, so now I have it mounted. I have a washer on the inside, a tab washer on the outside of the frame. I put a spacer in here as well to line up the torque arm nice and straight. And then I have the nut on. And it's flush on the end, so it's got a good grip on the axle. And then over on this side, I put the washer on the inside of the freewheel. You can see way back inside there. Let me see if I can get closer. There, you can see I put a washer on first, then the regular tab washer, and then I put a spacer washer here. The torque arm lines up nicely here. I have to tighten it on. And this is right at the end of the axle, so we're on good here for sure. So now I have the bike right side up again. And you can see the edge is mounted in there nicely. And the next thing to do now is to just attach this cable here on with zip ties and put it in a way that you have a nice curve back here for water to run off. Any water that's running down the cable will just drip onto the ground. That's called a drip loop. Well, now you can see that I have everything properly installed. The wheel is tightened on, the torque arm is there. It's all secured in place. There's a drip loop coming off the wiring, so if any water were to run down the cable, it would just drip onto the ground instead of going towards the motor. And the cabling is all zip tied onto the frame of the bike. And it goes right up, and how I did that was, I'm just going to show over here. This is a controller, a Magic Pi 5 controller, Edge controller, Smart controller, Smart Pi, whatever, they're all the same. Uh, they're just at different settings. And uh, there's three wires that come off the... Uh, Well, here's the main wire that comes off the controller, which would be coming from the motor, and it comes to this little housing here. And on this side, it splits into three wires. One of them goes up here and goes all the way around up to the smart display. Or you could also plug in the USB cable into that wire. And then you have this wire here that runs along and comes around and goes all the way to the battery uh, cables, battery attachment. So that's the red and black wire coming from the motor, and if you have one of our batteries, you have one of these plugs, and you just attach, twist them, uh, the red and black wires together, you know, you strip them off, twist them together. You can even use something like Moretz here, like this, to attach them on. And then the third wire coming from there runs up towards this plug here, and this is the main wire harness, 10-pin wire, and you can see on the 10-pin wire, it connects to the top where you have the brake levers, the throttle, and the cruise control button, and the horn. And uh, also coming off that wire is this one here that goes to the lights. And this wire I had originally at the beginning of the, the Magic Pie Vectors, but I've stopped that so far because people aren't using it, they're just cutting it off. You know, so if you want to hook up lights, it's a very easy thing to do. There's instructions on the website. You just tie into this wire. And it's like the wire back at the controller here. I had a Pedelec plug on there. And very people, very few people actually use it. So I just don't have it on there anymore. It's not worth it. Not worth the effort. And uh, that's how you hook it all up. It's very simple. And uh, then you attach it to the bike. You know, on the bike I have the gold motor brake levers, the control buttons. On the other side I have the, uh, the gold motor brake lever again, the throttle. Um, you know, I have a lot of stuff on this bike. I also have my phone, a cycle analyst. But that's pretty much it. With this installation, you can use this for the Smart Pies, the Magic Pie Edge, or the Magic Pie Vectors, uh, the Fives, the Fours. The hookup is all the same. Just the motor is different, all the wiring, and all the harnesses, it's all the same. And it's very easy to do, it doesn't take long at all. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. And it's Gary Salo from Gold Motor Canada. Thanks for watching the video, and enjoy the ride. Have a great day.